hello and welcome back and that is right today i want to talk to you guys about what are the best NASes for virtual machines now at the start of 2022 for those that aren't aware and again if you know about virtual machines you can skip forward a few minutes but if you don't let me explain a virtual machine is a virtual equivalent of a physical computer there's a good chance given this is it and most it users live behind a screen if you are when you're watching this, you may be watching this on a computer, be it a laptop, even a phone is a computer. A computer with a visual interface, a keyboard, a mouse, a big box underneath the table, a laptop, slippy slappy, keyboard down there, it's a computer. A virtual machine is kind of a virtual blueprint of that that lives inside another computer and it allows people to create multiple instances of that single computer within a greater system such as a server. So, for example, a virtual machine can live inside another computer. You could have a Windows computer and then one day you go, do you know what? That Windows 11 sounds really tempting. I might give it a go, but I'm slightly worried about its impact on my system. What I'm gonna do is make a virtual copy of my computer and then install the Windows 11 update on it within that virtual portal. That is known as a hypervisor. That software known as a hypervisor will allow you to run this virtual instance of your computer, run that Windows 11 update, you'll see that half the stuff you like to use isn't working properly anymore because Windows 11 has not been around long enough yet, and then you'll be pleased that you use a virtual machine. Oh, anger there. So, Virtual machines are also used for many other reasons. They can be utilized if you're running an operating system such as Mac and you want to test some Windows applications or have access to Windows software or services that isn't on Mac. Same goes for Android and iOS as well for testing software and stuff like that. It also allows you to test legacy software like Windows XP, Windows 98, old, old, old operating systems within your current new gen operating system it allows you to do all of that another reason for taking advantage of virtual machines is for multi-deployment you may be running a business where you've got multiple members of staff all of which are using a pc but you want to make sure they've all got access to the same operating system you've got access to all of their files a lot of people will use a server like a nas to host those multiple little systems I've talked about, and therefore, in your office, although you've got physical monitors, physical keyboards, and a physical mouse, that PC is just remotely connecting to the VM on that server, and you've got multiple users accessing it. It allows you then to keep track of what's being done on the computers of all of your staff. It also allows you to be able to roll back any changes that have happened. All of the data and stuff they create is all centralized on the server for backing up to another system. Again, there's many, many advantages to it, and lots and lots of people, when they go down the road of using virtual machines, fall into two separate categories. They either use online VM hosting, which is becoming increasingly popular given the speed of internet increasing, or they want to host it in-house on their own servers. Now, regardless of how you use it, you're going to need to use a hypervisor at all times, or at least integrate and port into an existing hypervisor and still have the bare metal, the computer that you're going to be working with there. Now, all of the servers I'm gonna talk about today are great for virtual machines, but more than just those three, there are bloody loads of great virtual machine NASes out there. But in order to narrow all of those thousands and thousands down to a manageable three to make it easier for you guys, I've had to preset some rules early doors. So, first and foremost, I'm not going to look at rack mount NASes. Now, a number of you have probably just gone, no, I'm done, I'm off, I get it, I get it. Rack mounts are the most typically associated hardware that people utilize for virtual machines due to the sheer scale of the machines and the hardware and memory upgrades possible with them. I'm not disputing that, they are great for virtual machines. However, once you enter into the rack mount area, you are talking budgets here of 10 to 20 to 30,000 pounds minimum. I am talking about people that need to have a contained virtual machine solution with NAS, and I'm only gonna look at desktops here. That's not me knocking rack mounts. Rack mounts are incredible, but they are super enterprise, and I don't think any of you should buy something like that off the sake of a 10 or 20 minute YouTube video with this guy in it, all right? Second thing, all of the systems today have to support at least four virtual machines at running at the same time. Doesn't matter if they're gonna be light or heavy VMs, they have to run 
four simultaneous instances while still remaining enough resources for the system to run. Now, whether that means you use resource sharing or you're running um, ported VMs that are much more granular in the hardware resources they use rather than just one call, one call, one call. It's That's up to you, but they have to run at least four passable instances of virtual machines. They also, 100%, have to support the likes of um, Hyper-V and VMware. These are pretty much the gold standard, and although there are other alternatives out there, and I do think all of these solutions have to support SaaS, or Software as a Service, so that's the likes of your Office 365 and your Google Workspace, all of which integrate blob storage as well. But on top of that, they have to support PaaS integration, Platform as a Service integration with the likes of Azure, uh, AWS, that kind of stuff. All of these NATs have to support that because a lot of people, their VMs run in conjunction with those for that storage and online space to exist. Also, all of today's NASs have to support containers to a greater or lesser degree. Because although containers aren't as lofty as a virtual machine, they are very useful in their own place. Think of a virtual machine as an operating system living on a PC. You know the apps that you use in a virtual machine? Containers are basically those. They are the apps free of the virtual machine and the computer and the operating system. That's kind of, that's a very big oversimplification, but that is what containers are. And all three of these have to be able to run numerous containers simultaneously, as well as all other virtual machines. And that is that. Now, those rules are by no means harsh. That, even just those parameters there, narrows us down probably from about 3,000 NASs to about 1,800 NASs. It doesn't make it that much easier. But nonetheless, I'm going to tell you my three highest recommended and definitely best NASs for virtual machines in desktop form at the start of 2022. First up, it's this, the Synology DS3622XS+. Why is this one of the few NASs during these best of videos that is actually here in the studio? Several reasons. One, it was only released just a few weeks ago, part of the way into December 2021. Right now, as far as Synology NASs go for me in desktop form, this is unbeatable for virtual machine utilization. It has a six core Xeon processor inside there, the Xeon D1531. Not the newest Xeon, but still more than capable for virtual machine use. It arrives with 16 gig of DDR4 ECC memory that can go up to 48 gig. Great for virtual machines there. It's got two 10 GBE network ports on the rear there. So again, there isn't going to be any bandwidth throttling for your more intensive virtual machine applications. Then you've got support in Synology Virtual Machine Manager integrated with upgrades that have happened more recently in Active Backup Suite allow you to not only create your own VMs and then containers in Docker with this enormous 12 base solution, but also thanks to its integration with Active Backup Suite, allowing that software to connect with Hyper-V and VMware and create those virtual images, they're slowly but surely reaching that point where you can access a virtual machine through the NAS while it's being synchronized. And in the event of it falling and something going wrong, you can retain and mount that VM on the NAS. Alternatively, you can run it on the NAS primarily, but still, it's great to have that working in synchronization on this and those cloud access um, servers there for your VMs. Of course, just using the Virtual Machine Manager software to host VMs within this system or on your local area network is still incredibly useful and capable on this device. And with improvements only available on the rear with a PCIe upgrade slot there that allows you to add SSD caching and DSM-7 improving deduplication, uh, which is pivotal um, when it's um, you're taking advantage of multiple VMs and all their dinky little files are running there in the background. As far as Synology NAS is in desktop form for virtual machines go, this little bit expensive and somewhat restrictive hard drive compatibility NAS, if we're honest, is still the best Synology desktop NAS for virtual machines, both at the start of 2021 and I'm willing to bet, I'm uh, sorry, the start of 2022, and I'm willing to bet for at least the next two to three years. And look at that, another NAS I actually have here in the studio. This is the QNAP TVS 872X. This is a 10 GBE equipped NAS system there. This system 
for as far as Keynote's virtual machines have ever gone, is still to date one of my favorites. It's not the most powerful desktop they've ever put out. It's quite high up there, and it's been year on year, always in one shape or form, in its XT or N form, definitely in my best of the years since its first arrival in its earliest iteration, the XT, back in 2018, arriving with a six core Intel Core i5 um, 8th gen processor and 16 to 64 gig of memory. There is more than enough hardware resources there for four VMs. On top of that, there is also support of numerous other things, such as the support of in Virtual Machine Manager, uh, sorry, a virtualization station graphics cards to have incredibly powerful VMs inside. There's also support of a KVM setup on this that allows you to host one of those VMs with a HDMI monitor, keyboard and mouse locally if you choose to, to patch into one or more of those VMs at the touch of a button. On top of that, there is support of downloading virtual machines from within the software. If you go into Virtualization Station, there's a little tab at the top, drop it down. You can download immediately a Windows 7, 8, 9, 10 and I believe 11 now directly onto the NAS. You don't need to have your own ISO image. You don't need to have a little USB or anything like that. You can just download the Windows virtual machine tool there and then have the virtual machine ready. You just go on and give it that much CPU, that much memory, give it those USB ports if I choose to, bang, and you're done. And then within the VM, you can assign your own existing key for Windows there or more. Again, after that, there's the VM marketplace where there's lots of third-party network and firewall VM tools as well. And you've got Ubuntu Station, which allows you to install multiple Ubuntu VMs onto this system. Container Station, all built in there. It's an incredibly versatile tool for virtualization. And again, don't forget the fact that you can assign the PCIe slots on this. And this has a PCIe Gen 3 times 16 slot inside and assign those to the VM. You could have multiple editors editing on this machine as virtual machines, which is very rare. Imagine sticking a graphics card in this, assigning that graphics card to a VM, and then that VM being powerful enough to edit videos from the other side of the world. That, to me, is going to be pretty handy indeed. It is a great tool. And then, when we start talking about some of those SAAS and PAAS services there, you've got things like Hypervisor Protector. You've got the likes of BoxSafe, which allows you to integrate with Office 365 and Google Workspace. Then, on top of that, you've got the ability to create that localized KVM setup for your VMs and then flick between the different VMs. It is such a versatile piece of kit. And it is lower in price than the previous NAS by almost 50%. This NAS here knocks around for $40 to $1,500, give or take. And that 3622 I just talked about is $3,000. So again, they've done an incredible job to get that all in there. It's not quite as user-friendly as the Synology, but they're pretty darn close. And for the price difference between them, it makes them this exceedingly attractive. But let's go on to my last choice, another QNAP. But this time, we're going to ramp things up a bit. This last one isn't one I've got in the studio, because quite frankly, there is no way in hell any brand's going to leave one of those with me and go, oh, knock yourself out, do what you want. This is the last QNAP here, this third one here. We're going to talk about the TVSH1288X. Now, as NASs go, wowza. Okay, strap in. So this one's got a six core embedded graphics Xeon, the Xeon W series. So we're already an incredible CPU. Not a lot of Xeons are have embedded graphics there. Six cores, this also arrives with 16 gig of DDR4 that can be upgraded up to 128 gig. Wow. Um, on top of that, it has those eight hard drive uh, bays along with four SATA SSD bays along with two M2 NVMe bays. So three tiers of storage, all with their own performance benefits. You can also set the system up with ZFS if you choose, which is way, way, way more conducive to a faster file system and therefore VMs running smoother. But alternatively, go with an EXT format and use Q tier, which makes the system kind of merge all the available storage together and then moves files onto the more appropriately 
fast or responsive tier. Again, great for virtual machines. It has all of the software attributes we talked about from the other QNAP, from the KVM setup, to the application being able to download um, VMs, to the ability to use uh, Container Station and Ubuntu Station, all built in there. Box safe, hypervisor protector, all of those integrated backup tools as well. But this is just so much more of a powerful NAS. It also has a PCIe Gen 3 times 16 slot, which again means graphics cards, baby. Which means this system with its better CPU and the ability to add graphics cards will allow you to create some genuinely immense um, virtual machines there that rival that of high-end desktops and create multiple of them. Yes, only one user can access the graphics card at any given time, but that means you can have one uh, NAS device, uh, one virtual machine that's got a graphics card inside and the other ones can still share out the remaining high-end resources as well as have a VM that could live on that faster tier storage as well. Again, not a cheap NAS. We're talking two and a half to three thousand dollars, depending if you shop around. Definitely closer to three, if I'm honest. But still, nonetheless, it's a great virtual machine NAS in desktop form and one that beats the hell out of most other devices. Again, I would put it close, if not on par, with the 3622XS in a number of ways. Again, they've both gone Xeon, but they've gone a very different way as well as upgradability. Um, within their systems as one. They're both 10 GBE as well for any network traffic there. But overall, those have been my three most recommended um, NASs for virtual machines at the start of 2022. Bear in mind, these are all enterprise level solutions. And if you are looking at just one simple VM to just knock around with, you can use a 920 plus for that, $550. You can use a DS251D, that's about $250, $300 but you're gonna have a much more streamlined, simplified experience. If you're gonna use things like Linux, Ubuntu, if you're gonna use a light Android VM, you can get away with it actually. If you're gonna use an old Windows 7 or even XP VM, you can get away with those smaller ones. But for big enterprise level users, maybe consider the three that I've talked about because these are the best of the best of the best. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. Take advantage of the free advice section over on NAS Compares, linked in the description, as well as um, using uh, the link to the guide where we've gone through a lot of these choices and why we've picked these three NASs for our top three VM NASs. But otherwise, I will see you next time.